But first, Defence Minister Richard Miles doubtless has his hands full trying to sort out the nuclear subs and how Australia might respond to a Chinese attack on, say, Taiwan. So it's hard not to be too down on him for being clueless about superannuation policy. Except that in addition to being the Defence Minister, he's also the Deputy Prime Minister. And given that he's effectively the number two leader in our country, he shouldn't be as ignorant as he is about the biggest policy change his government has announced this year. But that's a trouble when the government announces a sudden change in a complex policy area, especially one that gravely concerns a small but important section of the community who study it incessantly, worry about it constantly, and who are inherently suspicious of anything government does to raid their nest egg, especially, too, when it's a blatantly broken promise that looks and smells like premeditated deception. Now, plainly, the government always intended to hit super with more taxes, and plainly, they've been talking to Treasury for months about how to do this. But in this Labor government, there's barely anyone who's ever run a business, and there's probably no one in the Cabinet other than former party bigwigs and union officials with a self-managed super fund. And there's probably no one in the senior Treasury ranks either. They're mostly all on the old public service pension that find benefits scheme. None of them much have got any practical experience either. That's one of the reasons why government, if it doesn't consult properly, so often gets policy and its implementation so wrong because the people who make the rules almost never have to live under them. So here's the still newish government thinking it's got an unassailable lead in the polls, thinking that the opposition are unelectable, flying a kite on the left-wing holy grail of class warfare then they suddenly have this light bulb moment. They say, let's just tax the rich more. We've got a hole in the budget. Let's go after the rich. Let's just hit people with super balances of over three million with more tax. Now, what could be politically simpler and administratively more easy than that? I mean, no one cares about millionaires, do they? Three million or more in super? They're fair game. And in making the announcement, so it all would have gone, Let's reinforce how minded this change is by telling people that all the other taxes we might collect on franking credits or capital gains tax concessions, perhaps even the family not home, well, all of these, look how big they are, and we're only going after this $2 billion of the richies in super. Oh, here's some practical problems they didn't come across. First, people with more than $3 million in super often have self-managed funds, including property, and unless it's actually just been sold, how do you know what that property's worth? And if it hasn't just been sold, how do you look at its value? How do you tax, in effect, unrealised capital gains or unsold homes? Second, every single earner has super. And most of them know their own super better than any bureaucrat. And if it's a self-managed fund, which most of those over $3 million are, Almost by definition, it's self-managed. They know everything about it. They care about every asset in it, a bit like shepherds and their sheep. Meaning they want answers now as to what the government will do to their unrealised capital gains. Yet the government has announced a policy without working the details through first. There's not even legislation, no working paper to explain, which is why they're caught out in the media. Look at this train wreck of an interview today, the Deputy Prime Minister, Richard Miles, a sitting duck, only the longer the interview went on, he looked more and more like a goose. Here he is. In this, it's the empty seconds that seem like hours. How are you going to tax the increased paper value of an asset that hasn't been sold? Well, uh, th this is a, uh, a tax in respect of earnings. I, I, know, I know it's a technical question, but, but again, how are you going to tax the increased paper value of an asset that hasn't been sold? Well, it, as I say, this goes to the question of earnings in super funds with more than $3 million. Uh, how are you going to tax the increased paper value of an asset that hasn't been sold? If you don't know, it's OK. Well. Well, uh, it, the, uh, a process will be worked through uh, to work out earnings on uh, to, to work out what the earnings are on an ongoing basis. Where else in the tax system does that happen? 
uh, an assessment is going to be made in relation to super funds and their earnings. Right, I'll let you um, try and come up with a better explanation of that um, at, at a later date, um, like Jim Char Chalmers did. <laughs> The guy there in the red tie, that's the Defence Minister, also the Deputy Prime Minister, Richard Barnes, and we're going to let him as a country spend $100 billion plus choosing the submarine to protect us for the future, and he can't even explain a policy that they've announced earlier in the week. This is a policy that'll hit 80,000 families, perhaps more, there's no indexation, it'll keep changing every year. It'll hit them by $25,000 each, Throw in the 96 times they promised to cut your power bills before the election. Well, that's sure to be broken. Adding the promise to raise your real wages. Well, they can't meet that now. And now there's ongoing shambles over super. <laughs> it's hard to trust this government. Now, no one expects governments to be perfect. Voters will forgive an effective government a little bit of slipperiness with the truth. They'll even forgive a decent politician one or two mistakes. But there's zero tolerance for those that are both incompetent and untruthful. 